So the fact is, they say that we are crazy. They, by that I mean the consultants and the pundits and the politicians, the experts about politics, they say, they say that we are crazy. We, us, reformers, the people who believe that this system this system is wrecked. Those of us who fear that we don't have a democracy, maybe anymore. They say, we are crazy to talk about this issue. They say, the public doesn't care. They say, what we should be talking about are issues like health care and gun control and taxes and immigration. Those issues matter to Americans, to the people. The people are too divided. They are too polarized to try to talk about something else. And that's how you should speak to them, the experts tell us. Now, I think the experts are right. We are polarized. But what I find interesting is not just how polarized we are, but how bipolar we are. Because we are divided, no doubt, but we are united as well. We are divided by party, Republicans, Democrats. In this part of the country, of course, none of the above is the biggest party. But we are tribes in our party, divided in our loyalties, oriented to hate. The politics of hate is in our blood. But at the same time, we are united by a belief, a belief about our government, a belief that manifests itself in dissatisfaction. This extraordinary study conducted at the University of Maryland in the middle of 2016 found dissatisfaction with our government at the highest level it has ever been. And the common reason for that dissatisfaction can be expressed in a single slogan. They don't represent us. Poll after poll showed how they don't represent us. Corporations and their lobbyists have too much influence. 89% of voters, 89% of Republicans, 90% of Democrats. Elected officials think more about the interests of their donors than the common good. 89% of voters, 92% of Republicans, 88% of Democrats. Big donors have too much influence. 91% of voters believe that. 90% of Republicans, 91% of Democrats. These are the issues we are united on. That our government doesn't work for us regardless of whether you're Republican or Democrat or none of the above, that's what you believe. And we are right in that belief. They don't represent us. At least they don't represent us equally. Right? So if you think, do we have an equal freedom to vote in America? Obviously, we don't have an equal freedom to vote in America. Votes across this country are suppressed by techniques of voter suppression. Charles Stewart at MIT estimated that more than 16 million Americans in the last election had their votes suppressed by these techniques of voter suppression. Do we have an equal power to vote for president in America? No, we don't. We have an unequal presidential vote. Not so much directly because of the Electoral College, but because 48 states plus the District of Columbia, adopt the idea of winner-take-all in the allocation of their electoral college votes, which means that if you happen to be the minority in a state that voted the other way for president, your vote is just thrown away. It does not matter in the final count about who gets to be president, which means that 52 million Americans had their vote suppressed in the last election or in the House of Representatives. Is your vote equal? The answer is obviously our votes are not equal. Safe seat gerrymandering, where we make sure that one party wins a particular district, governs 90% of congressional districts. Only 45 districts are competitive, which means in those 90% of districts, you know the party that's going to win, which means the representative knows who he or she needs to worry about. And it's not 
the minority party. The only thing a Republican in a safe seat Republican district needs to worry about is a more extreme Republican, not the Democrats. And the only thing that a Democrat in a safe seat Democrat seat needs to worry about is another far left Democrat, not the Republicans in that district. You don't worry about the minority in your district because that minority will never matter to your election. Which means that in the United States, in the last election, 89 million Americans did not matter to their congressperson as they went to vote. 89 million rendered unequal. But then, most fundamentally, the issue that motivates so many people here, are we equal as funders of political campaigns? And obviously, because America takes for granted in almost every state the idea that public campaigns will be privately funded, that means we are not equal as funders either. Members of Congress and candidates for Congress spend 30 to 70 percent of their time raising money to get back to Congress, dialing for dollars. Usually when I show this to my students, they don't know quite what that technology <laughs> is, but this is the telephone, right? You remember this, they're dialing for dollars, calling people across the United States. No more than 100,000 people do they call. But it's not 100,000 randomly selected Americans. It's 100,000 of the richest Americans who they are calling, sucking up, bending to that power to raise the money they need to get their party back into power. We are unequal as funders, which means 139.9 million Americans see their equality suppressed. And even that is not quite right. I have to take one of those guys and cut off four-fifths of him to get down to the proportion who has the power in this system. Now take these and add them all together. And what that says is something that is so <laughs> obvious. Anyone gets it. We are not equal. We are not equal as citizens, which means they don't, they can't represent us. Now they'll say in response to this, well maybe, the experts will say maybe we are unequal. They'll tell us, maybe you are right that this democracy is broken. But still, they'll say, the public doesn't care about that inequality. The public doesn't see that inequality. The public will rally to you only if you say the magic words, health care, climate change, income inequality. Those are the words you have to utter and stop this talk about fixing this democracy. And I say, maybe they're right. Maybe we have a democracy that can't fix itself. I mean, I think we've never really tried. I look at the last election and I see two surprising candidates who made the fundamental corruption of this system central to their message. Not that I believe President Trump ever had a plan for draining the swamp. And I wish that Bernie Sanders had spent more time explaining to us what exactly we could do. But still, they rallied an extraordinary number of Americans because they said to America what we know America believes. This system doesn't represent us. They said that. And what I think is maybe if they said that more clearly or if we had a candidate who could reach more broadly, more clearly, that we could rally America to this cause, because here is what I know. As I've spent the last decade fighting this issue, speaking across the country, as I've spent it with some people here, walking the length of New Hampshire twice, walking across California, marching from Philadelphia to Washington, meeting people on the way, talking about this issue, in their eyes I see the passion which those numbers speak the passion we all have that this democracy does not work and we are not represented in this democracy and if we don't get that representation back what we all know is none of these issues health care climate change equality education none of these issues will be addressed that's what i can't help but believe so why do they believe differently so about four years ago, we did a poll, and we found that 96% of Americans, 96% of Americans believe it important to reduce the influence of money in politics. You might say, who are the 4%? Well, you know, we have a lot of lobbyists in America. So except for the lobbyists, 96% of Americans 
But that same poll found that 91% of Americans didn't think it was possible. 96% wanted it, 91% didn't think it could happen. This is the politics of resignation. This is the politics of knowing what you want, but resigning yourself to what you can't have. At least 96% of us wish we could fly like Superman, but at least 91% of us don't jump off of buildings regularly because we know we can't fly like Superman, however much we wish we could. We know it and we accept it because we can't imagine anything different. And indeed, because we believe this so firmly, when the politicians talk about reform, we just are like, what are you talking about? We know. You can't give this to us. And so they don't talk about reform. Their experts tell them, don't talk about reform. Don't make this central. Because if you do, you will lose. But what I want the experts from across the United States to do is to look more carefully at this extraordinary state. Because every single one of the issues that I identified as the core inequality of our democracy is addressed here. If voter suppression is a problem across the United States, there's no voter ID law here. Well, not yet. There's a push, but not yet. If the Electoral College through winner take all is a problem, not here, you allocate your electors proportionally. If gerrymandering is a problem across the country, what we know is the single most effective solution to that would be something called rank choice voting, which I understand right now you are fighting. <laughs> You are fighting to insist that your government actually implement what you told them to implement through your referendum. And if money corruption is the core problem of a democracy, this state for almost 20 years now has had citizen funding of campaigns, almost. <laughs> because Maine has led on every single problem that affects our democracy. You have led on every single problem that affects our democracy. You have taken those first steps to solve those problems here. You lead and you inspire in that leadership. You show us what is possible and you show us we are not crazy. We are not crazy when we try to rally Americans to recognize what of course Maine recognized first. We are not at least very crazy in that <laughs> effort to rally Americans to this cause. So what I think we need in America right now is courage of our leaders, the courage that Jax shows by making this issue central by for swearing money from corporate PACs and from special interest lobbyists. Courage to lead us and courage to ignore the experts, the experts, the political experts that tell them what they need to say. Because the thing is, what the experts are expert at is winning elections. But what we must do is save a democracy. We need more. We need more than the tiny minds that get us tiny victories. We, us, the United States, needs a movement focused on the fundamental challenge to give us back a democracy where we are equal citizens, all of us equally. I am so grateful you would show up for this fight. It is a long fight to go, but let's make this fight from Maine across the country now. Thank you so much. <laughs>